Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, it's kind of like an extra tutorial for this month. I thought we would do just a little postcard size uh, duckling. So not very big. Uh, all the measurements will be listed down below. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy drawing along with this one. Let's just get started. So I am going to start with my uh, dark sepia and we're going to start with the eye and I'm just going to Come in and map in the dark of this eye. Now it's not going to be the largest eye. We're not going to be too worried about details on this piece. We want it to look like a little duckling, but we're going to try and just be a little speedier. Still get a few details in, but not as detailed as some of the pieces. So I'm just mapping in the shapes that I can see. For this eye, this area is getting darker around here. So this is all just with the dark sepia. I'm not pressing too hard just yet. Just going to get that general shape in. Of our cute little duckling. And then as I've got the shape how I want it, I'm just going to increase my pressure. The dark sepia. Okay, so that's the dark sepia. I'm going to use the warm grey two as the base layer. So come up here, and then my um, walnut brown the dark shadows of this eye so I'm blending into that dark sepia coming out I'm just going to use a bit of a lighter pressure here um, and then I'm going to get my nugget just to have that lighter brown colour in the eye itself okay then taking my cold grey one in this highlighted area and I'm just going to get a little bit of blue so the um is this the sky blue no the light ultramarine just around that edge and then the white just to lighten here okay I'm back to that dark sepia just going to really darken probably end up coming in with a black later but for now we have an eye right i'm gonna get my um putty eraser and i'm just gonna lift the graphite here and i'm going in with my eye eraser base layer i'm gonna create these darker markings So just coming in, just mapping out these darker brown markings from the eye, first of all, right up to where we've got that beak. Okay, and then I'm going to get my burnt sienna first, and I'm going to be following still the direction that this little fluffy chick is going in with a fur. I guess it's fur. Not really feathers yet. And we're going to come down this eye as well. And then I want my walnut brown. And I'm going to take my walnut brown. I'm 
one from the top. And then I'm just going to go back to my burnt sienna here. Just to bring in that nice reddish brown tone there. And then the walnut brown. Okay, I'm just going to add that burnt sienna a bit more along here. And then the walnut brown again. I think we just need to bring that in a bit closer to the eye. And now an over and then back to the burnt sienna. I'm just going to blend down here a bit more as well. It's not as smooth a blend as I would like, so I'm just bringing that walnut brown over that burnt sienna and then bringing the burnt sienna back over to help with that blend. Back to my dark sepia. Just going to blend that eye out as well. And any darker areas just in this corner and along here with the dark sepia just to really bring that depth to the feathers here i'm going to say feathers and fur i'm going to be swapping them <laughs> like so okay so i'm going to do the darker stripe on the head as well so i'm just going to lift some of this graphite And then the ivory, right down to where that beak is. And applying this as the base layer. And then the burnt sienna again. Fading off those edges. So lighter pressure at the edge there. And the top of his head. And I'm applying this across all of his head. So what I'm doing is I'm just constantly looking back at the reference photo and seeing what direction this is going in and just drawing this burnt sienna in that direction. It's quite nice to do little studies like this. You can focus more on the uh, depth of your colours rather than the details. So I'm hoping this will only be a short tutorial, three or four maybe, three or four parts. Okay, okay, I'm just going to take the uh, Kaput Mortem now and bring in a little bit of a purpley red tone. Just along kind of like the top of his head here.
Okay, and then back to the burnt sienna, just to build up those layers. I'm going blending into that kaput mortem area. Okay, and then my walnut brown. I'm just going to really start to darken. This little part of the stripe. You can see I'm constantly changing the direction that my pencil is going in because I'm following the direction of this fluff. And that's going to help us create the shape of the head as well. Okay. The burnt umber. And then I'm going back to my dark sepia. Really dark areas. Blending outwards. And then I'm just going to take my burnt sienna again, just really dark on this side. Walnut brown, so it's a bit of back and forth while I just get the shade that I'm after. But he's looking quite cute already. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to grab my ivory just along this edge to smooth and blend and soften the top of his head. Okay, so back to the putty eraser. Just going to lift here. And my ivory as a base layer. Get those fluffy ends there as we come down the side of this face. Right, my light yellow ochre. Blending over that dark of stripe and then outwards. We start to build up these tones. Um, and I'm going to take my uh, Vista as well, just along this edge. Okay, the 
light yellow ochre and my burnt sienna again just to blend Okay, I'm going to get my Bista, just going to bring in this Bista colour along that light yellow ochre area. Yeah. Back to the ivory. Let's start to build up along here now. Okay, so I'm going to take the light yellow ochre very lightly like so. So we've just got like another base layer almost. Then taking my green gold and again, following this direction. And then the burnt sienna, again, just blending outwards here. I'm just going to bring in that darker shadow above this eye as well with the burnt sienna. Got my uh, sanguine. I'm just going to bring this in here. Turn that downwards as well. Constantly blending into those areas that we've already drawn out. Back to the green gold. And the burnt sienna just to bring in that reddish tone. So you can see just how dark it's going. Okay, um, I'm going to take this green gold and just bring it into this side as well. Just to blend it all together nicely. My burnt sienna. Over that. Right, so coming up um, this eye. So green gold again. It's going to kind of fade outwards. My Vista, just sharpen that. And I'm just gonna start to bring that in. Bit of a longer pencil stroke. And then back to my I'm just going to get oops, my putty eraser, just going to lift here and then back to my ivory. Okay, and then I'm going to take my beige red. Over the top, and this is where just like the highlight is hitting. Back to the Vista. Green gold. OK, 
Okay, going back to my walnut brown. I just want to. Add a few little details. So, okay, right. Pretty happy with this little duckling so far. Okay, so I'm just going to lift this bit of graphite here and back in with the ivory. Right, so I'm going to start off once again with the uh, green gold. And again, following the direction that this fluff is going in. I'm just going to call it fluff. <laughs> Not quite got the feathers yet. Light pressure down here. Okay, my beige red. Back to the green gold. And then I'm going to take my Vista. All over the top here. Burnt sienna. And everything is just blending seamlessly over one another. And then back to the green gold. Over the top again. Going to just get my green gold again on his little cheek and then the beige red. And then I'm going to get my um, sanguine, got a bit of a re reddish orange tone underneath this eye. Okay, I'm going to take my um, nugget Again, these pencil strokes are very short I'm not pressing hard We're just building up the depth um, on this face. Okay, I'm going to take my brown ochre. I think this will work quite nicely now. Down here. Yep, and over all that. Okay, and I'm just going to take the brown ochre up here as well. And the one grey two. Like so. Back to the ivory. Just going to bring it in along here. We'll get this beak drawn in soon. I just want to get a bit more of this yellow fur popped in. So, nice ivory base layer. Um, I'm going to come across all of this with the green gold. 
press a little harder now. I want this to be quite prominent. blend out what's there right so i'm going to come in first with my burnt sienna no sharp edge yeah it blends up and outwards Okay, and then the Vista coming from there. Nice sharp pencil strokes. Okay, I'm going to get my burnt ochre. And with this burnt ochre, I'm just going to come in. Again, just slowly blending outwards. I'm just going to bring it in above this eye as well. So making sure it ties in just kind of everywhere. So it's all part of the same little duckling. <laughs> right, I'm going to take my brown ochre over the top of this green gold now. I'm just going to get my um, eraser. What I want to do is I want to bring this right up to that line. So just get that ivory right up to where that line was. Green gold. Okay, and now I can come in with this brown ochre. Over the top. And then the burnt ochre. And the beige red. Okay. I'm just getting my dark sepia. I'm just not quite happy here, so I'm just going to come in and just define this fluffy part of the head a bit more. Just doesn't look as seamless and as nice as the rest of the piece. Okay, I'll probably come back to this, but I'm happier now. Right, sticking with the dark sepia, I'm just going to outline that edge of the beak here and I'm going to do that nostril area very lightly, I'm not pressing hard here, I'm just kind of mapping in the dark shapes come down This nostril and this beak. And this is still just very lightly with a dark sepia. Like so. Right, so I'm going to come in with my. Um, Oh, let's just lift a bit of graphite with a 
put an eraser and then I'm going to take my graphite, uh, cold grey one oh, not graphite at all, it's cold grey one <laughs> be careful near those yellow areas, we don't want it to go green there is green on this beak but we don't want it to go green yet <laughs> and I'm just going to apply this across this top half of the beak Kind of along here, and it's a bit warmer in there, so I'm not going to do cold grey on that yet. Okay, and I'm going to take the warm grey one in this corner of the beak right so I've got my warm grey four and I'm just going to start to build up the shadows on this beak come down here there's going to be a greenish town so I'm just going to get my um, cold grey one I just need to bring that beak out a little bit wider here for those green tones and that warm grey five is just going to blend very slowly downwards and then I've got the curve of the beak here as well I'm going to grab my um, cold grey 2 and I'm just going to blend down here and then we want to get our greens so I'm going to get my earth green yellowish and this is going to give us that really nice bright green shine on the beak Followed by the olive green yellowish going over those warm grey tones blending upwards and then I'm going to use the ivory over the greens to just blend and soften out and then the warm grey far again just blend down, keeping it all super smooth and blended. Back in here with a warm grey. Oh, and that out. Okay, so following the shape of this beak, just coming down here with a warm grey four. And we have a darker mark in there, so I'm getting my uh, dark sepia, and I'm just gonna draw that in. The cold grey four going over where it's going to be dark there, but it's going to give it that nice blue tone. Come down this peak. This area is going to be nice and dark. But I'm still coming in with the cold grey four. Okay, my dark sepia. I've got a really dark end to this nose, so I'm just going to use circular motions as I come round this beak. Smooth it out. 
and then lightening my pressure as I want it to start to blend into those lighter areas. Nice and sharp edge along here and blend it upwards. So it's going to get a nice smooth blend eventually once we start really blending these areas together. I'm going to take my warm grey uh, warm grey four. Just over the top as well. You can see I'm blending over that dark sepia and then blending outwards. Getting a nice smooth blend here. Blend down here as well. And the core grey two on this tip of the beaks. Okay, my uh, burnt umber. Again, blending up and inwards and over those areas. And my core grey one. Back to that dark sepia. I'm grey four. So, okay, okay, I'm just going to keep my cold grey four. I'm just going to come in under here. Again, circular motions. And then lessening that pressure as I come down here. I'm going to take the one grey two. And then go over that with my warm uh, cold grey too. It's starting to get a really nice smooth looking beak now. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, cold grey free, and I'm just going to take this over the top of her little beak here. Okay, I need to darken um, the corner of the beak up a little bit more. So I'm getting my dark sepia again, nice sharp pencil. And I'm just going to start to apply harder pressure now as I come in with this darker area. Light lessening the pressure as you start to blend outwards. You're just following those darker shapes that you can see. Everything is about shapes. Just building up the shapes. My uh, Paul Gray 4. Again, just in here. And then the cold grey free. And my cold grey one for these highlights. Okay, the cold grey free. Is this a free? Yep. Yeah. Just on the top of this nose. And then the dark sepia. Just going to blend that nicely down that side. Okay. Just going to take my um, brown ochre now, very lightly, in this corner of the beak, and then my burnt umber. Just going to blend down here. And 
the nugget. Um, Blend all of that together with the one grey too. And then I'm just going to get my dark sepia here and I'm just going to blend out, soften this line a little bit. It's the one grey too. Right, my cold grey four. a little bit more blue tone along here okay get my ivory now just along the bottom of this beak just got the bottom area to draw in now which is quite a nice yellowy orange tone so i'm going to come in first of all with the burnt ochre along this bottom area. I'm going to blend that dark tip in a minute and then I'm going to get my light yellow ochre. So these are colours that we've used already which keeps it all part of the same animal. Okay and then my dark sepia Cold grey four. And the um, burnt sienna just along. This edge. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my white. Pressing quite hard just to really brighten this line here. Okay, and now we've got a beak. So let's just finish the head. And then that'll be a nice place to stop from this part of the tutorial. So just lifted the putty, uh, lifted the graph out of the putty eraser. Coming in with the ivory. Up the head. Okay, so we have a dark a little bit of um, markings there. So I'm just going to come in first of all with the burnt sienna and add them in. And go over that with the nugget. And then I'm going to take my beige red along the edge of this head and I'm gonna do yeah I'm gonna do it all the way down this side of the head kind of where this highlighted area is just adding the beige red oh I, I think this piece is gonna be quite cute you can do this piece as large as you want. Obviously, mine's quite a small piece. Just because it's a little bonus tutorial. I didn't want to do it too large and it would take too long. Okay, I'm just going to get my warm grey one in this area over the beige red. Okay, and then my green gold. Blend lightly outwards over that burnt sienna area there. My light yellow ochre. And I'm not pressing hard, it's nice and light here at the moment. I'm getting that beige red. 
in just to help blend. Okay. Now my burn soaker. Page red again, just okay. Burnt sienna, and that might be sanguine. See, I'm just building a lot of colors up to build the depth within this fur back to the burnt, uh, burnt sienna. And then I'm going back to my green gold, just pressing a little harder now. All right, yellow ochre. And I'm going to get my ivory and I'm just going to go right over the top of all of this. Okay, my brown ochre now, I just want to blend this little bit of fur outwards. Okay, right, just want to sort out this top of his head, so back to my burnt sienna. Just not happy with this side of his head yet. Um, and I'm going to take my uh, walnut brown and again just lift that pressure off. Build a little bit of detail. I think it's just lacking a little bit of depth here. So yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, uh, just get my beige red. Along here. Um, got a bit of a sang. I'm going back to my sanguine. Just gonna build up those little orangey red tones. Okay, along there. Just making sure that I'm happy with everything. Um, my vista. Um, okay, yeah, I am going to leave uh, this tutorial here for now. We've got his head done. Uh, so in the next part, we will keep building up our little duckling. If you've got any questions, don't forget to leave them down below. And I'll see you all in the next part. Bye, everybody.